Up next, just getting you caught up here with what I've been up to since the break in November. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I thought I would spend a few minutes here to get you caught up on stuff that I've been up to since the break in November. Uh, mainly, I wanted to show you a couple of projects that I've been working on uh, that relate to my airbrushing. Uh, ever since I did the review on the Galeri 98 airbrush, I've been wanting to try that brush out on a few other things, particularly with figure painting. Uh, up to now, I've been using wet blending techniques for those types of projects, but uh, I've been watching other um, modelers and figure painters uh, use the airbrush instead and so I thought this would be an ideal opportunity to try that out So I think this airbrush has a few more capabilities than the ones I've been using in the past uh, Before we get to that though one quick announcement. I wanted to just share with you here I'm not going to be attending Wonderfest unfortunately this year um, It just so happens we've been planning this trip to Spain and with the way our work schedules turned out uh, in coordinating with this trip uh, it just so happens on the return leg of our trip it happens to be that same weekend that Wonderfest is going on so unfortunately I, I have to miss the show this year so I will miss you guys at the show I know it's going to be a great one and I have our intention on attending next year all right um, also uh, I'm in the process of getting my uh, first build of 2024 started and that's the Galactica landing bay so I'm well underway with that I will be posting an update to, uh, of that project on the channel very soon Okay, so let me get through these projects here. Um, so as I mentioned, I used the Galeri 98 airbrush with this along with some dry brushing. Uh, let me first show you this one here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this first project here. And some of you may recognize these. These are figures from the animated Dungeons and Dragons series, which was broadcast back in 1980. Now I knew of the game back then, but never really played it until just a few years ago. This series, however, caught my interest and loved watching it during its run. The show centered on five characters that were transported into the D&D world and are then tasked with various missions with the hope that each one would get them closer to returning home. Unfortunately, they never wrapped up the show's storyline, but it was a great series nonetheless, as some of the episodes were written by some of the great writers such as Paul Dini, who later went on to work on the Batman the Animated series. The figures are designed by UEL from CG Trader. He's the guy who designed the Johnny Quest diorama I built last year, and as you can see, he captured the characters' likenesses quite well. All of these were detailed and painted with a combination of using the 90H GHAC airbrush and the dry brushes from Artify. Now these two characters I'll start with have shown on the channel before. They were used to demonstrate the dry brushes from Artify and these are Bobby the Barbarian and Sheila the Thief. The base colors, shadows, and highlights were applied using the airbrush and they were enhanced with dry brushing. The figures each come with an individual rock stand and they all come together to make one larger display. Next, we have Eric the Cavalier, which, as with the others, is nicely detailed down to the chainmail of his suit. UEL did a wonderful job with the shield, providing an embossed symbol that made it easy to paint. Here we have a beautiful sculpt of Diana the Acrobat, and he did a great job capturing her athletic physique, which is enhanced by the pose. I actually left the arms and staff unglued to help with transporting the figure. Next, we have Presto the Magician, and UEL did a great job capturing the disappointed look he has on his face after having pulled out flowers from his hat rather than a more useful spell. The Monument Hobby Paints I used for this project really did a great job capturing the vibrance of his green outfit. And lastly we have my favorite character here, Hank the Archer. For this one I printed the arrow and bowstring using clear resin, then airbrushed it with thin Tamiya clear paints. So the next figure to be printed is this one here. This is Venger. He is the main villain in the series. These figures were all printed at 80% of their size to help with transporting them as well. And even at that, Venger is going to be a pretty good sized figure. After him will come the Dungeon Master and Uni, the Unicorn, and his figure here of an orc. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at those figures. I certainly had a lot of fun working on them and look forward to finishing the project. Uh, as you saw there, he's now completed Venger and that orc. And the last one he's now done is, uh, is Dungeon Master and the Unicorn, which he called the penultimate figures. So I assume he's got one left. The only one figure I can think of is Tiamat the Dragon, which will be quite an intricate figure if he does come out with that. That'll be amazing to work on. So um, I'll keep you updated on this project. In fact, what I'll probably do is maybe do a video on the very last figure that I end up doing for this for this project here and and uh, and so just watch for that I, I'm gonna be um, 
completing this project after the Galactica build. Uh, I felt like I was under a time crunch, which is why I've gotten so many of those figures done, uh, because I was intending on taking them to Wonderfest, but since I'm not going to the show now, I can take a pause on this and get started on this next build, because I really do want to get going on it. All right, well, let's move on now to this other project I have to show you. Let's take a look at that. All right, so this project that I worked on is something I did for the holiday season as Christmas gifts, and they consist of 3D printed figures from a short animated series called Over the Garden Wall. This is a fun little show that we binge every Halloween, and it centers around two kids named Wirt and Gregory who are lost in the woods. The show follows their adventures as they make their way home, and they meet up with all sorts of interesting characters along the way. The one with the hat is called Wirt, and he was voiced by Elijah Woods. The other is his little brother, Gregory. They befriend a bird named Beatrice, who is voiced by Melanie Lunsky from the show Two and a Half Men. The display here shows all three characters, and both Wirt and Gregory are dressed in their Halloween costumes. Wirt has a combination of things on, while his brother is supposed to be an elephant, hence the upside-down teapot on his head and the spout serving as the trunk. Greg is holding onto his pet frog, while Wirt has Beatrice there on his knee. Each display has a backdrop that I oil painted, and they were done to reflect the style of the background seen on the show. And the figures were mounted on a circular piece of birch that I found at Michael's. Well, I hope you enjoyed following along here and taking a look at those two projects. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at IndustrialDemodeler at gmail.com. I will place a link down below now to uh, UEL's page on CG Trader. Unfortunately, the link to those figures from Over the Garden Wall it's no longer available. I'm not sure why, but if you go to cults3d.com and you search over the garden wall, you'll find there are a few other designers who've uh, come up with figures that look somewhat similar to those. Okay, before I wrap up here, one other announcement to make. Uh, Galeri reached out to me recently uh, in regards to their new line of airbrushes called the uh, Premium line. Uh, the GHAC98 is part of their Ace series, but their new Premium series includes two new airbrushes both a 0.2 and a 0.3 brush under the name Mobius. Now these brushes were specifically designed to provide fine detail. I've already worked with them. In fact, they probably would have been a better choice for these figures uh, versus the 98. Even though the 98 is a very good airbrush, I plan on using that as my workhorse airbrush. But if you want to achieve fine detail, I've already worked with these. Uh, these brushes are great at doing that. I've been very impressed with them. I've actually done a video looking at these brushes and also have chosen a subject I think you'll be interested in following along. A few years ago at Wonderfest, I attended a, uh, uh, a panel that went over a particular type of technique that allows you to achieve a more realistic skin tone. Um, I tried that method using a Badger airbrush way back when, but uh, wasn't able to, to achieve good results with it. You really do need an airbrush that can provide fine lines like this. And uh, so I tested out these airbrushes with that technique and it worked out pretty well, I think. So I think you'll be interested in that video. It will be posted here on the channel shortly. Following that then will be my Galactica build. As I said, I've already started on that and I'm looking forward to working on that and uh, showing you what, uh, what that looks like. Uh, and that will be coming up on the channel here sometime soon. All right, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.